In the beginning of Game of Thrones, it's one of the great houses of Westeros, House Stark. Changing hands shortly after the death of the king, Robert Baratheon. It is one of the oldest lines in Westerosi nobility. What up, fools? OG Matt Stark, how you doing? Jen, yes, Jen. Brace yourselves. Lore is coming. Now, you know the term winter is coming, their phrase, the reason for it, right? I don't care. It's actually referring to the White Walkers. Oh, so it's racism. I guess if you think of an extreme case. But it's basically because they were part of the First Men. Yes. Which banded with the children of the Earth. Yep. To kick White Walker butt. But the, 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 they made the White Walker. The children did. They, they made the White Walkers. I said the children did. I know, I'm just saying. Yeah. They made them. Yeah, they so, did. So they're cleaning up their own goddamn mess, basically. Well, they, yeah. But the other, the if wall was built. If you don't want to go to war, don't create supernatural forces. Simple. So, you got Rickard Stark. Rickard Stark. He was the Lord of Winterfell, Warden of the North. These stupid titles are annoying to me. And he was the head of House Stark until Aerys II decided to get a little butt hurt in his defiance after the kidnapping oh, of his brother. daughter, Lyanna. Aerys, who had a big obsession with fire, burned Rickard alive. All these stupid events happen and I'm like, it's like three key points. You've got these three. He had these three children. You have Eddard, Ned, Lyanna, and Benjen. Benjen. How was his nickname Ned? His name is Eddard. I don't get it. They did have a other brother, Brandon. He doesn't matter. He protested Lyanna's kidnapping. He was strangled to death. Yeah, he doesn't matter. By well, the king he wasn't technically strangled to death. Technically. But the important, the only reason he's important is because he is betrothed to Catelyn. Yeah, but like I'm just saying, technically so... he wasn't strangled. Technically. <laughs> Technically, he was hung. Technically speaking. Because okay. there was a strangulation device attached to his neck, and he was trying to get to a sword. So, by reaching and lunging for the sword, he technically hung himself. Heck. Technically. What we're gonna go but semantic-wise, yes, he was strangled. So that happened. Yes. But the main part is, is that Ned gets leftovers. And now, I'm OG Stark. So, oh. you have Ned now is Lord, Lord of, of Winterfell, the Warden of the North, House Stark. He's the big daddy of all that. So, you've got Ned married to Catelyn. And below him, you have his son, Rob, daughter, Sansa, daughter, Arya, son, Brandon, or do they call him? Braun. Got Rickon. And we've got this little bastard over here, literally, John Targaryen. Snow. John Targaryen. John Targaryen. My assumption too. I think we're good on that one. I think we massively yeah. agree. And that's that's one. And I caught it before he did. But then you have this guy. This guy, he's hanging around because he kind of was Theon given to him. His daddy was not liking him anyway. Nope, he wasn't given. He was taken. He was taken. Um, when they took down the Iron Islands, he was taken um, because if the Iron Islands decided to strike up arms again, he would have Theon killed. He was taken. But he basically was raised with them. Yes. He was like another child. Yes, but he was taken. So, Ned. Ned, Ned, what happened to your head? <laughs> Ned. God, he sucks. Ned. Ned, what happened to your head? It was cut off by the bitch king. So one bastard's not bad, right? Like, Although, so. as we're saying, it more than likely isn't his. But for all intents and purposes, from what we know and what we are told, he is the bastard son. I'm really glad uh, you didn't screw that phrase up and, like, merge syllables together. That makes me happy. Oh, people say intents and purposes? Yeah. Yeah. No. Intents. For all intents and purposes. T, Three different not words. S. Yes. Intent. Yeah, it's, I, I have terrible enunciation. Leave me alone. That's why I'm a writer. Leave me alone. That's why we have editors. 
I don't have an editor. That's why I have an editor. I love you. I use Just Grammarly saying. and it's fantastic. I love my editor. You can't tell where I'm looking and it's awesome. <laughs> you might, I, might I am it. looking down at a piece of paper. So, Ned offers up Sansa to marry Joffrey. Yeah. They come to visit, crap happens, and Joffrey gets a little manhandled. A little. He gets kind of slapped around by Tyrion, and it's hilarious. <laughs> and then you get the wolf thing. <laughs> oh! But he catches Arya. Loved it. Joffrey catches Arya. Yep. Playing, and he's like, you shouldn't be playing with these swords and all that kind of stuff. And she basically says, piss off, mind your own business. A dog gets into it. They have a big old thing. Sansa sides with Joffrey. And like we were saying, with the Lannister house, could have avoided a lot of crap. The fact that Joffrey decided to mess with a Stark child who was known for having a direwolf as a pet, who are very defensive and uh, territorial, mm -hmm. number one mistake. You did it to yourself, dude. Dip shit. He did. He deserved it. Yep. He deserved his death. He deserved it for all sorts of reasons. Yep. So, you've got that happen. Off to Winterfell, like, off to Land King's Landing, they go. Yep. They're doing this, and then he's with his big old buddy, Robert. They do the hunting thing, which we've talked about. Yes. So, we talked about that with the Baratheon. They do the hunting thing. He dies. He knows all this stuff about Cersei and the bastardry, but Stannis is king. Cersei's pissed. Ned loses his head. Yep, because he wouldn't, um, well, you know, because Joffrey didn't keep his word and just assumed that killing him was a mercy. It's like, well, way to twist those words around, dipshit. Technically, it was for treason, but that's... Well, I'm talking about what him and, and Sansa talked about. Oh, yeah. Because Sansa wanted him to take mercy on her, on her father for treason and send him to the wall. Right. But Joffrey said that things like treason wouldn't be let go. Oh, yeah. I have his speech, and it's pretty, you know, it tells you how crazy his ass she is. She notates everything. I'm always wrong, apparently. It doesn't matter. I did what? Moving on! Rob Stark, your favorite. Yeah, he was my favorite until his death. I was just like, well, fuck this show for me then. I'm just going to watch it for the story. So the Red Wedding pissed you off. Yeah, it pissed everybody off. Yeah. He's the one person who actually deserved to, to be on the throne. At the time. Now I don't care who gets it. So he's the eldest son of Eddard. Yep. Uh, when his dad's arrested, he decides to get a bit of help from an army instead of pledging fealty to the Cray Cray King. Cray Cray. We're talking Joffrey. Apparently it's 2013. <laughs> he is. Is he not young enough? Never mind. Okay. We're not talking about, I am not a child. He's already said I'm 90 years old. That's a different episode. Moving on. But this is after. I said, what is this, 2013? Oh, I thought you said Because that 13. was slang for the time period. Okay. Apparently you're old and can't hear. Go on, talk about Rob. I won't listen. I'm, I'm just, I'm commentary. <laughs> so, after... His daddy's forever nap. <laughs> Am I not supposed to say that? The hell is a forever nap? <laughs> oh my god. That's I the worst way to describe someone's death. Okay, Where's so. Where's dad? He's so taking a forever nap. So you're supposed now. to be social commentary. I can't say anything of humorous no, value. It's just, it's just... Whatsoever. Yes, his daddy takes a forever oh nap. God. Daddy's sleepy. He'll wake up never. I've heard, I've heard of, of, of buying the farm. Kick in the bucket. You've never heard Forever Nap? I've never heard Forever Nap. That sounds like the most twisted way to describe a death in a children's story. <laughs> Where's Daddy? He's taking a Forever Nap, honey. I okay, I'm weird for saying Cray Cray, but he has never heard Forever Nap. I think we're even. Who the hell has heard Forever Nap? I have known it for ages. Maybe it's because I am older than you. Maybe it's because you were born in Germany. I wasn't born in Germany, you twat. I was born in England. Close enough. They're both four, and they don't matter to America. Any which way, Rob is cool, gathers his army. King of the North! Let's fight some Lannisters, let's fight everybody, we're going to be taking our everybody. crap. What? Nothing. Just keep, keep on keeping on, dog. No. 
I don't want to wait for the Lord to continue. I just want to burn all of Lannister's. This is where he takes Jamie hostage. Yep. So he's got Jamie, and this is where the wonderful, wonderful Brienne of Tarth comes in, and they become friends and all that kind of stuff. But Brienne, the important thing about her is that she promises Catelyn that she is going to find Sansa and bring her to safety. Yep. And she makes Jamie swear. <laughs> That's probably one of the most laugh laughable things I've ever heard in my life. What? Like, the entire northern side of the continent is fighting against someone or another. And you're promising to return one little girl? You're out of your goddamn mind. But she does it because she sticks true to her stuff. She makes Jamie promise it. Because, you know, they're best friends. Out of her mind. She's not out of her mind. She is just very honorable. Blinded by loyalty. She will swear an oath to everybody. And she will bend and yep. do her long monologue that she does. Core loyalty is basically worth nothing. If you do one good thing for you, I swear you must I, um, I, I honestly think the last season is going to have a lot with Brienne. Can we just kill her? No. There's so many trashable characters in this last She season. is not. She's such a trashable character. She is character. not. Okay, Brienne's supporters, you're going to have to help me with this out because he's just kind of... She's friggin' useless. She Okay, she basically goes from one camp to another, finds a good reason to change her services over, and then goes to that person. She killed Stannis. When that she killed Stannis. When that reason... I don't care if she killed Stannis. Anyone, she beats Loras. Anybody could have killed Stannis. She fights Loras, who's supposed the, to be a most awesome knight. Only... She is an awesome knight. She wants to be a knight. She can't because she's a lady. She doesn't want to be a lady because she wants to be a knight. This is totally an awesome thing for a woman to do, especially in Westeros. Okay, I'm not arguing that. I'm, uh, I'm arguing that her motivations... For going between camps and changing her services are laughable. It makes her services and her loyalty worth nothing because she keeps passing with different people. She fulfills every one of her promises. She's basically a mercenary who doesn't get goddamn paid. It's all she is. She's a mercenary. That's Which it. makes her honorable. Anyway. What? Never mind. She's, she's, she doesn't necessarily promise to kill people. Would that not be what a mercenary is? Mercenary is someone who works for the highest bidder. She's a mercenary. She is not. She is just someone. She just does, she's a volunteer mercenary. She has a mercenary. code of ethics. And her ethics, she keeps up with her promises. Moving on. Yes. That's pretty much what I said. So, you've got that. The promise. Rob meets Talissa. Sweet, sweet Talissa. We get pregnant. We get married. The only female character in the entire show I found attractive was killed four episodes after she, after he met her. Yes. Fucking irritated. And unfortunately, that was during the Red Wedding, where Edmure Tully yep. was engaged to Rosalind Frey, Walder, <whistles> Frey's daughter, which Rob was supposed to marry, but because he married Talissa, it kind of was off. So they go to this Red Wedding, and Rob loses not only his child yep. through the stabbing of Talissa in the stomach multiple L times. Loses the war. Um, the Starks lose their mother, a brother, and a next heir. He gets shot like four times with an arrow. Yep. But he's still alive enough to crawl to Talissa while she catches her last That's breath. Being a parent and someone who has a brother and other siblings. His wolf dies. And his wolf. That was probably one of the most traumatic events of the entire He watches his mother's throat get slit. Show for me. We've got that. He watches it. That's Rob. Rob, super awesome. You should have been king. You shouldn't have died. All would be well. But winter didn't come. Or it is coming, just not for you. So, now we have Sansa. Sansa, you little twit. Why the hell do you make the decisions you make? Seriously, why? You have betrayed your family, you decide to marry Joffrey, and then you find out he's freaking crazy. He tortures you, he does all this kind of stuff. And yet you go with him, of course you're relieved, because he's going to marry Marjorie. Not you, but hey, we get to marry the imp. But 
shit, what happens? At least he was, like, pretty honorable about their entire marriage. Oh, he was. He was very honorable. He's like, I know this is kind of crappy for both of us. Let's make the best of it. You're going to hate this. I'm going to hate this. Let's just agree to disagree and, like, just not touch each other. Done. <laughs> Moving on. Perfect. Unfortunately, that's the only husband that was nice to her. Yeah. But we'll talk about that in just a second. Um, Joffrey's wedding happens. Yep. They're there. Her husband, Tyrion, is made a fool of, and Joffrey dies. They're looked at. Sansa kind of gets pulled out because, you know what? She's kind of in trouble, so time to escape. Yep. Yep. Baelish is the one at hand for that. Your lovely friend, backstabbing, two-timing Baelish. Just, I, I, I still don't understand. Sansa was never anywhere near the, um... She the was the wife. Yeah, but she yeah. she wasn't near the wine jug because if you watch the scene, the, the the wine jug that he was given wine from was at the complete opposite end of the table. He says it was in the wine. Couldn't have been in the cake. Well, I I okay, just hear me out. Peter yeah. Baelish has the necklace with mm -hmm. the uh, the missing gemstone on it, mm -hmm. which was hinted at it being the source of the poison. But it doesn't make sense because the wine jug was over here while Sansa was sitting over here. So it would have been the Tyrells that the poison that the, the... It was the Tyrells. Well, I'm just like, from a theoretical perspective, it would have been the Tyrells. Okay. Elena basically alluded to that fact. Yeah. So, Baelish takes her off. And takes Goes to crazy... It. Listen, she's pretending to be the niece at the time. Fucking insane. And you've basically... What? Uh... Baelish... Little finger marries Lissa. Yep. Lissa takes a plunge. <whistles> she's out of it. So now you've got she's hanging out with Peter Baelish and Robin. Yep. Aaron. And they're kind of doing their thing, but how is it? I'm trying to think. Uh oh. Baelish promises her everything's going to be okay, and then she yep. gets given to the Boltons. Yep. Yeah, because Ramsay Bolton needs a wife. Yep. And because the Starks are the most powerful in the North, and they, Baelish gives him Sansa, and making him they're Lord in Winterfell, Winterfell at that point. Yep. They've taken over Winterfell, so yep. obviously they are the Wardens of the North So at they that have time. captured Winterfell, and mm -hmm. since he's married Sansa Stark, he's now... Lord of the North and uh, Ward, no Lord of Winterfell, Ward of the North. Sorry, fucking titles, God. Damn it. They have a million titles. I mean, it's so stupid. There's so I I could not even remember it. Um. So now you have her. She's Bolton's plaything. Yep. He tortures the living. So was he boning one of his sisters or like one of the handmaidens there? Just one of the handmaidens. Okay, I thought I was confused about that because it never really. If it was stated, I would. I was. I was watching her work. I wasn't too sure. He doesn't have a sister. Okay, good. 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 <laughs> Sorry. No, just one of the handmaidens. Good. And she's the one that kind of said. I bet she was handy, wasn't she? <laughs> and like Jamie Lannister. So at this point, I said married gets tortured. You've got this guy, who is in Bolton possession, but we're not going to talk about that right now. It's going to be a totally different episode. We're not talking about Reek. We're going to be talking about the Bolton and Greyjoys together, because that, that, that has to be done. Yeah. But not right now. But he's there. He helps her escape. Yep. He helps her escape. And you've got my savior, Ryan, is there doing what she promised. So she takes Sansa. She gets Sansa. And takes her to... Castle Black. Meets up with her brother Jon Snow. They kind of talk about who needs help with what so they can take Winterfell. And the last episode that we watched was the second to last episode of the season. Battle of the Bastards. Battle of the Bastards. We will talk about that. But she's out there and she is... She, she, she gets revenge. Correct? Yeah. She definitely gets revenge. But there's theories going out there, and I personally think that she's pregnant. By who? She was raped repeatedly by her husband. Yeah, but how long ago was that? In Game of Thrones, how much time is spent, is separated. You've got... We're we talking about Sansa or Brienne? Sansa. Okay, never mind. I don't care then. 
Well, I was talking about Brienne because I was just like, wait, the, no, she's been with nobody in the entire show. No, I'm oh. talking about Sansa. Yeah, okay, I'm good then. That's fine. Because I think she's pregnant. Yeah, she was raped by, by Ramsay, so that's a whole different Mutilated story. and, yeah. Yeah. Because when she states that I still feel it Yeah. now, that's, that's, that kind of tells me that That's some illusion of pregnancy. Yeah. So now, you're, I don't know, is she your least favorite Stark? We got Arya. That's always going to be Bran. Always. He's your least favorite? Yep. Okay. So Arya. Just because, like, we don't really have much explanation on him. We really going to have to find out a lot about him, but I think there's exactly. a whole time space like, continuum shit going on. Yeah. So we can go to Brown if you want to go with him. We'll yeah. go with him and then talk about Arya. Let's talk about Brown. The one thing that I have the most to say about is him being pushed out of um, the tower in the first episode, the second, third episode. Or was it the first episode? I think it was the second. Okay, second episode by Jamie Lannister when Brand. He was doing what he was told not to do. He was being Carl. Basically, yeah. <laughs> God damn it, Carl! Okay, anyway. <laughs> Game right. of Thrones. Game of Thrones. Yes, we're not talking about walking at this point. Brand the Builder. Yes, Bran. Okay, so we have we have Bran. Current Bran. Like crippled Bran working in the hold door's mind. Hold the door. Hold the door. Hello. I thought it was hilarious. I I saw it coming. Anyway. I just um, feel so sorry for him. And, well, it's him. Anyway. So we have Bran current now. And we have... The Three-Eyed Raven. We have Bran the Builder. Get your hand here. And then there was another one. Rickon? Or, oh, you're talking about... Uh, Faces of Bran. Oh, the... the Yeah. Third Eye. Yeah. The, um... Three-Eyed oh? Raven. Yeah, Three-Eyed yeah, Raven. Yeah, okay. So, we're told almost nothing about him. Period. Except he's like in gone for current a few seasons. Tense. Yeah, he's just not there. Like we know he's somewhere doing whatever the hell a cripple does in Game of Thrones. He disappears but... north of a wall, and then we yeah. don't see him for a while. He's and then, friggin' god! And like, then we first see him. He's in a he's in a tree. How hard? He's how, like literally how hard up to is a tree. it to keep track of a boy who cannot walk, <laughs> who is being carted around by a giant and a girl with a nice bow and arrow, and a dude who's basically useless, useless except for his sister. So it just it doesn't make any sense to me, and I just and can't he can stand. control. Hold yeah, on. I can't stand that they don't explain that. Like there's there's no explanation for the lack of information we're given about Bran, and I can't stand it. Sansa, on the other hand, we're giving so much detail about everything Sansa's thinking, feeling, doing, saying, who she's boning, and it's annoying as shit. I don't care. <whistles> Rant over. So, Bran's history. Yep. He just summed it up. There you go. They'll end up pretty much, they escape. Yes. That's when Hodor holds the door. Holds the door. So that they can escape. That was totally hinted at, by the way. Well, but it's whether it was hinted or not, the emotion that happened while oh, you yeah. were watching it. But the reveal of it was hinted at in the first episode where he actually went back. Right. That was told like you. When he was going he, back, you knew something was going to happen because he yeah, was watching Hodor. Yeah, because he kept friggin' out. going back and right. he was talking to his dad. Father! <gasps> I think I hear a stock calling me. Hmm? At the pear pout of pleasure. But the whole incident itself really just kind of made me teary. I was laughing my ass off. I thought it was hilarious. I don't get teary eyed about a lot of things, but I did this. I got teary eyed when, when Bumblebee died in Transformers. But this I laughed about. Well, I got, like, bundled up in Transformers. I was like, what? Most of the time, I, I get can. very enthusiastic, especially with this last episode, with the Battle of the Bastards. Honestly, I thought the entire episode was boring. Un un until the end! Un un that giant was awesome! Until I saw um, Rickon die. Then I was just like... <gasps> okay, here we have Rickon. Rickon is even... Rickon more... is useless. He is useless. He travels. He travels with his brother for a while, then he gets taken off. Rickon was purely and then he gets a plot kidnapped device. By, That's it. Then he gets kidnapped by the Boltons. Yep. Not Bol yeah, the Boltons. Boltons. And the Boltons have him, and this is what happens in the war. The bastards, yeah. basically, you have him. Bolton says, run, 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 run. And he's running. And everyone knows. Everyone knows. If you're going to run, you you're run zigzag. zigzag. Yes. God damn it, Rickon. Run straight. And here's John. I'm coming, I'm coming, I'm coming, I'm coming. Not that way. He did Remember, that with boy, I said the point of the game is to run. So, so stop running. He gets killed. Free and takes off in a straight line. Yep. 
And and that's it. That's that's Rickon. That's the end of it. Basically, his only point of this is to piss John off. The only the only part of that episode that got me messed up was when Rickon died because he died like a foot in front of his brother. Yeah. I have a brother who's older than me, and if I saw my brother die a foot in front of me, I could have helped prevent it. I'd have lost my shit too. And he does. But then <laughs> friggin' Jon Snow, Leroy's right into the Bol Bolton camp. The hell is your problem? You did exactly what Santa told you not to do. You did what you were planning on avoiding. You arrogant asshole. We'll talk. We'll, we'll get back to that when we get back to John. Okay? Because we are almost there. We gotta talk about Arya okay. and her little okay, side stuff. Because okay, Arya is doing her own thing. She really is only seeing bits and pieces of what's going on. She watches her father be beheaded. Yep. She escapes and she she gets kidnapped by the Golden Club. Yep. Club. She she hangs out with Gendry. Gendry. Gendry, Gen Gendry, 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 the bastard. It's Gendry, it's Gendry. Yeah. Hard G. The bastard, Baratheon bastard. So many bastards. <laughs> she hangs out with him, and somehow she ends up being the cupbearer of Tywin Lannister. Yep. He doesn't know it, and there's information that she gets that she ends up meeting this weird guy. I'm going to look up his name because I don't want to say it wrong. Jack and Agar. Yes. Jack and Agar. That's the name he takes. Yep. Because he's doing that. A man has no name. And because she kills one of his kills, she owes him, or she takes three lives. She owes no, the she, god she, three she, lives. She saves him and two people That's what in, in a boxcar kind of thing from being killed in the future. So because... He, she saves three lives, including him. She has to make the three names, which is on, yep. which is on the list. So she's yep. got. Let's see what what do we have here? Seriously, I am completely okay. Um, I want to get the names if I have it. Uh, Sir Amory. Yep. He was one that was snooping on a letter. The letter. That's what was happening when she was a cupbearer for Tywin. So he's done. Those little friggin' darts are wonderful. <laughs> awesome. Um, yeah, just the one that gets pushed over the wall. Yep. So, that's two. The third one, what does she do? Who's the third one? I don't remember. The guy himself. Yeah. She t names, you, she's like, you can't name me. Why do you do this? Uh, uh, like, the look on his face is just amazing. And that's what leads to what he wants her to do later on. He gives her the coin to go into his city. You yep. will have safe passage. So she is in this crazy city. Doesn't realize that the house, with the house of black and white, that she's going to, is basically a temple to the many faced god. Yep. And they're basically they're mercenaries and for I, this god. And I totally knew that she was not going to go through all of that. Like, no, she wasn't. She gonna wasn't. She was going to like, she's, she might drop She's way too goddamn stubborn of a Stark to finish all that crap. Yeah. Like she just keeps clinging on the things that, that from her past. that maiden was just a little bitch. Oh, the waif? Yeah, she was a bitch. I mean, she had a right to be though. So I'm not going to like, she's trying to make sure that Arya can do, can do the thing she's supposed to do. She is, which but you... She repeatedly says throughout the show that she doesn't like following directions. That doesn't want to do this because someone told her to do it. So, we all have evidence that suggests that she's not going to do anything anyone but wants her to do. Period. Like, uh, back in season one, when um, Ned Stark told her that she was going to marry a lord, have kids. Oh, she refused like, to do she's that. Like, no, that's not me. It was like, that's right there. Like, she's not going to do anything anybody wants her to do for any reason, except for go to Bravo's to find this guy who kills people for her. Oh, yeah. So, and she has a list of her own. So you've got them here. I'm not, and, and I'm not missing out. I'm, I'm not bypassing the Hound. Because really, I mean, she meets the Hound. He is an awesome guy, he, but he's not. He's just good at what he does. He's a terrible person, but he's a great killer. Right, he's good at what he does. He rolls, she she gets kidnapped by, he's taking her for ransom. Just like Jamie Lannister. And what is it, a couple of ransoms, he realized this shit's not going to happen. Yep. And he ends up rolling down hill. Yep. Arya's gone. This is how she ends because up. Because of Brienne of Tarth. But he's a bad guy, she's a good person, she's a Stark, that's the way that goes. It's, it's not as black and white as that. But, I see but she does going. go to the house. But that, uh, that's, I know, I know. Yeah. I'm just, I see where you're going. Continue. So, 
that happens because the hound i'm sure the next season is going to be coming up we're going to be seeing a lot of the hound yeah i really hope that they have the hound in the mountain actually like oh that would be awesome the axe the way he goes after no his... zombie mountain right but i mean the hound is his axe is his proficient weapon that's true yeah so and he yeah. tried to be peaceful he, he did tried. try to be peaceful, and that, that, that didn't Until work out for him. the Brotherhood Without Banners came and just wrecked yeah, shit. Yeah, they did. So, you, so Arya dealt with this guy. Now she's in with this crazy cult. Yep. And she's being trained to have no name, have no face. She's supposed to be a silent assassin. She obviously she is working for now. the wrong assassins because she's too stubborn. And, as he was saying, the way she kept failing at the task that she was doing, because, honestly, she... You can't have a conscience and work for them. Nope. But I think, personally, that the guy sent the wake after her when he named her, he knew Arya was going to kill her, and that was actually the final test. I think Jack and Agar is the wake. I think that's the same person. Because okay. he never directly addresses her. In the same. They never directly addressed each other, and they're never actually in the same room together. When he says kill her. Like, you see. When he, when he says kill her, when he's doing the other body, uh, taking care of it and all that kind of stuff, he says but, her name. Okay. Go watch the scene again. Pay close attention to it. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. I'm serious. Just We're like go Fight watch. Club in this, aren't we? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Thank you. I didn't want to actually say it. I wanted to see if she would catch it. Jon Snow. <laughs> he does that to almost everybody. He, okay, this guy hates everyone on Game of Thrones, but he loves the story. Yeah, the characters, like, they, they just, they have these huge convoluted backstories and lores behind them, and they're just, okay, one guy killed this guy, so I'm going to kill everyone else who knows him. All right, well, how about you just stay the fuck home and build your house back? Probably because you can't get over your issues. But it's not his house because he's a bastard. That's not the point. So, Jon Snow. Jon Targaryen. Jon. Jon. Jon Targaryen. Jon! 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 He's our man! He's our man! No, he's not. I really hope he does not get the iron from him. But whatever. A little broody. A little dark, a little moody. A little, he's like the Batman of Game of Thrones. <laughs> yes, he really is. So he goes off to Night's Watch because his daddy said that's the place, best place for you. Catelyn doesn't yep. like you. You gotta go. When Jon Snow... Actually, we're not there yet, so keep going. I'll talk about it later. Okay. He gets his best friend, Sam. Yep, Sam Tully. He's got his own story, which is pretty cool, but he's not part of one of the main houses. I don't mind Sam Tully. I think he's a great guy. Do you want to say anything about Sam? While we're doing this? I drink I'd have a drink with him. No, he's a good guy. Yeah, I'm just saying he's just not part yeah. of the great house. I'm just saying I'd have a drink with Sam Motelli because he's cool. He's an honorable guy. Yeah. Uh, and he killed Walker. Yes, he killed my Walker. And, by accident. But he did it nonetheless. But I, I wasn't arguing that I'm just saying. And I he love that he to took it. off and basically in his daddy's face yep. says, Screw you, I'm taking this sword and I'm gonna go kill you. I don't walkers. want your life. Also um, the character from Varsity Blues who voiced that line, which is often parodied in other things, also oh, passed last he week. did just pass. So I want to say I'm sorry for your loss uh, to his friends and his family. We are losing a lot of people. We're losing a lot of people the last couple of years, and it's very upsetting. Um, so we're sorry. But moving on, back to Game of Thrones. So he meets Sam. They pal around for a while. Constant wearing Night's Watch errands together and fighting because that's what the watch does. Yes. Oh. Very good at doing that. They fight, they look over the wall, eat boring food, all kinds of fun stuff. Yep. Throwing <laughs> each other. There's I no, totally do not want to see John and Sam. No way it doesn't happen. There's a Not lot, with John and Sam. There's a lot of I'm just saying it doesn't Oh, I'm the just, other guys, I'm the other guys, yeah, happens. yeah, because they're because when you're part of the Night's Watch, you are not allowed to have anything. Basically you are cutting your balls off without cutting your balls off. How's that? There's a lot of sticky wool clothes up there. What do you think goes into the... I don't want to... I don't want to talk about <laughs> it. Okay. So, north of the wall, he goes. Yes. He does a few things. He gets this swooning thing with this hot redhead. He 
You're correct. I think I think she looked better as a brunette, but that's just my opinion. I love you, Greg. You know nothing, Jen. I'm not John, so. <laughs> yeah. uh, wildlings or the Night's Watch, he's not quite sure. He kind of hangs out with the wildlings for a while. Fights See, I don't think the, the whole wildling thing was um, Egret was an accident. I think he did all of that stuff on purpose. But she was the she she kind of screwed things up because he had feelings for her. Yeah, I, I don't I don't think that was an accident. I think I think that was all planned. So except for the boning and licking in the cave, that that just happened. <laughs> walkers, this is where we. Actually, meet the White Walkers. White Walkers, not zombies from Walking Dead. No, that's Day. that's that's pretty much that's actually what I had in my head, in I my know, notes. I'm just not I'm just, of the weird thing. I'm just saying. You know, not the Walking Dead. Just but, to separate the the canon right. the universes. You've got White Walkers. Okay, after a momentary pause. Now we're back. Talking news about from Winterfell. Jon Snow, White Walkers, attack. They get their butts handed to him, except for Sam. Not literally. No. That would be funny. They weren't like... If they chopped off their butts and they just... They weren't like, like cutting off butt cheeks and just like... That would Here's be your ass. ass! Maybe that's what those assless chaps are supposed to be really for. I don't... Okay. Just, <laughs> let's not talk about assless chaps. It's not that kind of show. So, back to Castle Black. Back to Castle John Black. John wears such a trail. I mean, there's a trail from North of the Wall to guess what? He wears North a trail? Wall. You know, wears through a trail. You know, wears down. Oh, okay. Okay. I am using now. the word incorrectly. I just, I didn't, I didn't catch it. Sorry. <laughs> Jesus. So he's going back and <clears throat> forth constantly, right? Yep. And he decides he's going to basically uh, talk to Lord Mace. Yep. So this stuff happens. You've got Lord Mace. Mace isn't going to go... He's basically not going to agree. The only thing I wish anything. John would have done differently with the White Walkers after they got back from, um, oh, where'd they go? I don't remember what the name of the place was. Where um, the guy that was having sex with his daughters? Oh, we're, we're not far yet. We're not that far to what I'm thinking about. Okay, never mind. We can get there. Oh, I mean, sure? I mean, we've gone off topic. We're, we're not giving you, if, if you think this is a timeline, apparently this is a warp timeline. Yeah. We're, we, no, never, we never promised it in order. There's no timeline here. Not with the way we do things. We're just talking about important events that we think shouldn't, should, shouldn't have happened or happened differently. And give, anyway, you a, and give you a lowdown. So what I'm referring to is when they got back from um, the big fight with the Wild Walkers um, at the meeting with the Wildlings. When they got back, John didn't tell... Um, Lord Commander. No. Um, what was his fucking name? Did Stannis? He... No, oh. not Stannis. The, the one that ends up dead? Yeah, the one that ends up dead. That guy. I don't have Jackass dude. Anyway. Jackass dude. Yeah. They didn't tell, he didn't tell him about what he saw up there. He didn't tell him about the massive White Walker army. He didn't tell him about the entire wildling camp that was killed being brought back to life in front of his eyes. Even though he would have had literally hundreds of witnesses about it. He let it just go. And including the little kid, whose family was, was killed by Watt Walkers, he didn't tell them anything. He just kind of let it go. And that's, that's why he got his butt kicked and stabbed by, what, a seven, eight people? He basically, everybody went Caesar on him. Yeah. They, they, they killed him because he knew information he didn't want to tell. And it's his own fault he died. It is. It's his own damn fault. It's his own damn Stark arrogance. So, rewind. He deals with... Lord Mace, Wildlings, all that stuff, they yes. come in. You've got Wildlings that actually attack Castle Black for a while. Yep. They attack him. You've got Agret, you know, kind of shoots him. Oh well. Yep. But you've got Giants. One of them's riding a Bloody Mammoth. How fucking cool is I that? I thought that was pretty cool that it was a, um, like a... It was a giant riding a mammoth coming straight at the door. It was a friggin' Megadeth video. <laughs> Seriously. It was, there was metal playing. There was a mammoth. There was a giant attacking a big ass ice magic wall. If that doesn't scream a metal video to you, nothing yeah. else will. I'm not a metalhead, but I could appreciate that. I'm just, I don't. I like G Easy though. She listen to G Easy. So Egret dies. I don't care. But Egret dies. So he's a little heartbroken. That goes on. Uh... Stop trying to get your dick wet when you're at war. 
Stop it. <laughs> Stop. After Egret dies, what happens? He goes north of the wall. Again! This is where he finds a wildling settlement, and this is where he finds Tormund. 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 Tormund's a great guy. He's one of your I've got no problems about Tormund. He's, he's, like, he's like super awesome Viking. Because Tormund, like, okay, he's a really simple guy. He knows what he wants to do, he knows what he needs to do. He needs to eat, he needs to survive. And he would he like. To, he needs to kill people. That's it. That's it. And, and, and he makes a good bond with John. They make true. a good team. Yeah, they're a really great team. They are. So, so basically, pretty awesome. you have a paladin and a death knight, and it's fantastic. But unfortunately, we like the guy, so they're probably going to kill him off. Yeah. They should have fucking killed off John. They... Jackass. They did kill him. It didn't take. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you should have let him die. So you've got this, and we go to what he's talking about. We have talked about it before when we were talking about Stannis Baratheon. You've got Mace refuses to bow down to Stannis, who is now occupying Castle Black. Yep. And he burns him at the stake, yep. and Jon shoots an arrow to ease his pain. So he dies that way. That's kind of another reason why he kind of gets killed. Yeah, it's her also why Tormund sided with Snow. Because he decided, he decided to, to save his... Mercy. Yeah, yeah it, it was a mercy killing. And yeah. Tormund was like, well, that was okay. pretty cool, bro. I got your back. That's, so, that's not what he said. I'm just paraphrasing here. I, told I am you. summarizing. I, told <laughs> I totally could see him doing it there. Right? I got your back. <laughs> like, Tormund, you As he rips through his meat and stares at Brienne ever so oh, lustingly. It's so weird, dude. The look he gives her is just so awkward. And it's she's just, just like, my food. This just screams rapist. To me. And all she was thinking about was her food. Yep. She wasn't thinking that he was looking at That's what I've been thinking too. It's like, you're taking my food. Me, bro. <laughs> He's obviously a hungry man. I'll cut your stomach out and feed it to you. Eat that. <laughs> she's bro. a big woman. She needs her hearty meals. She, I mean, so she now took down the hound, so hey. True. And she killed Stannis. She was sick and weakly anyway. But she did it. Any okay, so we're just saying what she did. It wasn't even a challenge. Okay, moving on. But she did it because he <laughs> said he killed Renly. Moving and on. She, moving on. Her honor to Renly. They got Starks. We're talking about Starks. But she we're had promised we're honor to Renly at the time. About Starks. All right. So the thing he was talking about when they go to the Wildling camp, they're off in this nice little icy place. They're all camped together, living together. All, all the water all around, yep. ice, and then boom, they're trying to make this big summit. Fishy, 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 fishy. Got the giants there, and then like thousands of White Walkers just appear. I think the most epic moment of that entire battle scene was when Jon Snow, when his, his, his uh, uh, sword, what name of the stupid fucking sword? It doesn't matter. But it was Valyrian steel, and then it clashes with the White Walker sword. And they've all been clashing and breaking until then. It's like, ting! Well, what comes? She's like, <gasps> he's got one. John's like, oh my god, what do I do now? <laughs> Panic! Lock up! Fail! And he does it. He panics, he locks up, he fails. He just ends up running off like a little girl when he actually had something in his hand that was powerful. And what the fuck did he do? He gives it up. It's does he, sitting. Because he, he realized, did Sam tell him at that point? Did he even tell him that's what happened? Nope. So it he was Sam not speaking to him, telling him that's what this sword kind of does. Yeah, but John didn't tell anybody else what happened about the sword. He didn't say shit. No. That's what I'm saying. John, open your goddamn mouth. Communication! Now. You're getting people killed, John! Speak. Speak you got boy. your brother killed. Speak. It's your fault, John. It's your fault. It wasn't, but I'm saying it's yours because you're getting everyone else killed. So they get run off by the walkers. They have to go back yep. to Castle Black. And this is where John gets stabbed to death. Yep. He does die. He really does die. And he deserved it. But Stannis mm -hmm. has Melisandre. God damn it, Melisandre. The witch, if you recall. From... Stop bringing people back. But he only got back because the Lord of the Light goes with your theory. That's what she says. We don't know if she actually is powerless or not. That's what she wants people to think. I mean, she could have power, but the Lord of the Light, and this will go with your other theory with Bronn. Did you not say that? Oh, yeah. That's right. So, that Bronn is Lord of the Light. Lord of Light. So why would he not want his brother yeah. brought back? I think, I, think, I think this is all in Bronn's head, to be honest with you. That's I do, too. I, I, I actually agree.
Well, you basically, my theory, I don't know whose theory this else is, but this is something I've accumulated since I've, I've watched all of Game of Thrones in like a month, basically, right? Yeah, I watched all, everything I in a month. I have watched him through each episode, yep. tell me these things, and I'm like, mm -hmm, anyway, anyway, the theory, well, my theory is that when Bronn got kicked off the tower by Jamie Bichester, Lannister, sorry, that he's not come out of his coma yet. So all the things that have happened in the story now is all in his head. Like, he's making all this as he goes along because he can't deal with the reality with him being still asleep, basically. It's pretty deep. I'm, I'm, I'm not saying it's wrong. That's pretty deep. Yeah, but the brain is a wonderfully powerful thing. You can think of a, a thousand things just a second, so it's oh, not yeah. really a stretch. With the power that he has, it's just a possibility. But, but that, that doesn't mean it's actually true. Like... His power, it might just be in his head because he can't control what's going on in his life, so he assumes he can change things in his sleep. And then it just continues to evolve. We'll find out when brain. Martin finishes his book. Yeah, in like 20 fucking years. Probably have like the last book just hidden in a vault until he dies. Hey, at least I don't write as slow as he does, but the thing is is that he at least has a big fan following, so we're good. He's good. He, he's got... He people are going to buy his too. stuff. It's good. I'll get there eventually. Pirate Moving on. Back to John Bitch. So, said Melisandre resurrects him. Yep. And he pretty much, as we were saying, I think it's because Lord Light, even though with Bronn, even that fire, he's Targaryen. The two, they go together. And I think it's because of his Targaryen blood, which is my assumption, is just a theory, so don't tell me I'm saying this is gospel. It's not. This is just my thought. That is actually what brought him back. She could have helped. She could have been the conduit. Yep. So you've got that. He comes back to life. They say, hey, you're kind of still our boss. Hey. And he's like, uh, no, I you died. You can't die yet. We need someone to lead us. Well, but look to that guy. I'm done. He Thanks. might drop out of that place. But then he comes back. Seriously. I don't really think he might drop. He uh, kind of just whimpered away. No, when he walked out, he pretty much, that was when he said he was done. But then it comes back. This is before Sansa's there. He kind of changes my stance, it comes back, and he means, okay, let's skip what's going on. And this is when they start to do the fighting, or figuring out the fight that they're going to be doing. We want to take Winterfell back. Yeah. This leads us to Sansa trying to make deals and other stuff. And they meet this kind of awesome, badass little kid. This girl who has her army, but she's kind of a tough little shit. She has 67 men. But if... Uh, as they were saying, if the men were as saucy as her, that it would be just fine. That's true. I kind of sort of want to see what she's up to next season. I don't. I like her. I don't like children in major roles. I, I just like I, her. I have a thing against it. They don't. They just. It's really weird for me. Like video games and TV shows and movies. I have a, a thing against kids in in major roles. It just it's it's a personal thing. Don't worry about it. So you've got that. Now we're at the Battle of the Bastards. This is where we are current. We just watched this this last Sunday. Leroy Snow. You've you got Jon Snow on one end, Ramsay Bolton on the other. We are not going to take Winterfell, says Ramsay Bolton. When they were planning this battle, we should have known that it was going to happen. That they were going to do exactly what they were planning against. Getting cornered on all sides. And do you realize that tactical move? Yeah, it's a pincer. Everyone knows how to do that pincer. But I mean, it was by, um, what is his name? I just completely forgot. Dude. Hannibal. It was Hannibal. He's the one that created that move. Oh. Hannibal was an awesome warrior. He was great at his tactics. Yep. So that's basically where that one come from. So you have this. You've got them fighting. They are pretty much losing. Yep. Giant is taking blow after blow after blow. It doesn't matter. He's going at it. Do people not know how to aim for the head? Seriously. Like, there were at least four or five spears just, like, in his arm, in his, like, sh shoulder, his side. Like, aim for the friggin' head! You have a big-ass target! So you... So the you hell? Have, so you have a second, the second wave that's waiting to come out. Yep. And then formation breaks. They get to come loose. So you've got the second wave coming out. You've got them coming out. And now Bolton is running. He's was running that, like, a pile of bodies at the back? It was. It was, was a pile a of bodies. Pile. Okay. Yes. I was kind of... Okay. I thought it was a hill with bodies on it, but it was a... It was a pile of bodies. It was just a... That's a lot of dead people. Yes. And the way that it was, like, crafted into, like, this curve was just really weird to me. It's like, that, that shouldn't That's have... That's Bolton. That just shouldn't have happened. 
but that's Bolton. Great. Yes, it should have happened. So Bolton goes with his tail between his legs back to Winterfell. He and then and then no, he decides. No. Why did he go back to Winterfell with tail between his legs? Why did? Because he, he was going to give what John asked for in the first place. Let's be men. Now back up. Why did he actually go back to Winterfell? Who intervened in the fight? Sansa and the army from the Vale. Yes. They pushed Ramsay Bolton and that's, his little... Yeah, that's what I was saying. Yeah, like, the you, second wave came. You, you you didn't mention them by name. So okay. people who might have missed it... Sorry. There you go. See, you That's missed. what happened. I'm just trying to help you out. See, we're a team. High five. Too slow. My arm hurts. Oh, damn it. <laughs> Sorry. I'm abusive. This is Mighty Mouse. She's like four foot five, but she can pack a punch. All right, so when Ramsay Bolton gets pushed, pushed back to Winterfell and then the giant breaks down the gate at Winterfell and then the rest of the army from the Vale and the camp from Jon Snow breaks in, it's then Jon Snow versus Ramsay Bolton. And fun fact about this episode, which was which gives me so much respect for um, respect, there's the actor who played Ramsay Bolton. The whole shield scene, he actually got hit in the face with that shield by Jon Snow. Actually, like, physically got hit, and um, and Johnson was beaten on this dude's face, broke his nose, but did not want to stop the scene, and just kept pummeling cool. him. So like, you were getting beat in the face by Kit Harrington, and you didn't want to stop because of the scene needed to, to be continued. Oh yeah, no, no, Props no. to you, bro. He's actually grown in a lot of his acting. I I watched one show called Misfits. Misfits. It's on. It is on Hulu, or it was. I've but never heard of it. Huh? I've never heard of it. Totally different character. I'll probably Check research it, it, but I haven't seen it yet. Yeah, but that's the first time I saw him. So totally different character, and I'm loving how he's doing Bolton. But that's pretty awesome that he did that. Yeah. So, yeah, he actually physically got beat and taken to the hospital because of how bad he got beat up. Like, it but he finished the scene. But he finished it, and you can't tell that like that was all his actual blood. That was all him. Like, he physically bled all that out. Nice info. I didn't know that. That's yes. pretty cool. Yes. That was awesome. Awesome. That's weird. So Bolton now he's suggesting to John what John suggested in the first place. Let's avoid all this bloodshed. And I won't tell your army that you're going to involve them if we one on one. Yeah, that's just that's stupid. They could have just avoided all of this. But he didn't want to but he because didn't want John to because Snow he... is known as the best horseman right, in the world. Right, and he knew that. Because he's got his dogs that have did everything. Which is why, if you noticed, when they were fighting the one-on-one -on -one at Winterfell, he had a bow and arrow. He did not pick up a Correct. sword. Because John would have grabbed his sword, and then he would have just been sliced and diced. But that's okay, because Bolton busted up, beat up by John, yep. and imprisoned. This is... I love this part. Imp. Imprisoned. Wrong one. No. Imp. Whatever. <laughs> I'm thinking Tyrion Lannister. Oh, yeah, and... yeah, Leia, I get it. Jesus. They get it. Just wrong S one. Slow. I know what I'm doing. There's a spider web of lies and deceit. Now I'm thinking no doubt. That's a good band. Gwen Stefani. Ain't no holler back, girl. Ain't no, no holler back, girl. We're talking about spider webs. That's the first song I heard. What? Spider webs. What? From No Doubt, that's the first song. Oh, whatever. Well, I just... Doesn't matter. Keep it going. Anyway. You want to say? About what? Bolton, his final thing. Okay. Because <sighs> you love it. I want Who to else say was it. <laughs> so excited when Ramsey got his ass chewed out by his Me. own dogs? Me. Like, and by the order was, of Sansa. That was major foreshadowing. He hasn't fed his dogs in days, so they're rapid. They're starving. They're and hungry. And she reminds him of this. Yeah, she reminds him of it as she sets them loose. And she says, My he dogs will be would erased. never harm me. He says everything. Will be erased. He will not be remembered. And all I know is when those banners dropped in Stark and they, and they were the Stark crest, I was just like, he was dog meat. Ba -ba -da -ba! Ba -ba -da -ba! And we are now caught up with the Stark house in Game of Thrones. We're but... caught up with the entire season up to episode nine, yeah. Battle of the Bastards. Yes. That is the story of. I would say we're, we might not see too much of the Starks in the final episode. I am hearing that it's um, going to be about Cersei's trial, and it's going to be a little bit about Danny. I I can almost guarantee there will be some kind of um, 
a tower, little tower door reveal. There's going to be something going on. There. I'm sure, but it's mostly going to be Cersei. Channel. I know, yeah, but I mean, there's going to be small bits in there. But anyway, we're lost in discussion. This is the end of House Star. If you have any ideas or foreshadowing from the previous episodes or details as to what's going to happen know. in the next season, let us know in the comments. Um, we will be posting um, more episodes after this one. This is actually a, a part four. Um, no. We, we actually, this let us count. Series. Yeah, it's going to be a series Sorry. because we Strike need to make that. sure to break it down. I can't math. Obviously I can't either. We can't math together. So does that make us two parts of a fractured butthole? It's not part game. Sorry. I've never played it, but it sounds funny. Anyway, this is Matt. This is Jen. Out.